Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday to you. Josh's severe weather. The tropics are looking like they're going to pick right back up next week after a lull here. And we do have a system that looks like it's going to develop into our next tropical storm. The next name on the list is Francine. And models today beginning to show us some more of a signal than what they've been showing over the last few days, which is uncertainty uh, that we will have a tropical storm at some point in the eastern or central Caribbean. The next name on the list is Francine. And until the system forms, the track is going to be highly uncertain with models taking it through the Caribbean, maybe towards Central America and the Gulf, or even some solutions turning it up towards Florida or even east of Florida. And again, until it forms, we're not going to know exactly how it's going to play out. So if you're anywhere in the Gulf, in the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, uh, just at this point, keep an eye on things until we have more certainty coming. Here's a look at the uh, tropics across the globe, and it remains busy in the Pacific and not so busy in the Atlantic for the time being due to the fact that we still have a lot of stable dry air over the Eastern Atlantic. Uh, as you can see here, this is our invest area that now has a 40% chance of becoming a depression or storm between now and next Thursday, probably in the Eastern Caribbean. In the uh, Pacific, we do have three systems, but Hector is on its way out. Uh, Gilma is weakening and remains will bring some moisture into Hawaii and Hona Actually, the one that had the best chance of affecting land and affected uh, the Big Island of Hawaii early on Sunday looks like it may try to redevelop and re-strengthen over a warmer pocket of water. And we now have a tropical storm, Shan Shan, that moved into Kyushu in southwestern uh, Japan and is weakening but producing tremendous amounts of rain and slowing down. And the certainty level on where it ends up here by the weekend is very high or very, uh, very low, a lot of uncertainty. Let me uh, rephrase that. Uh, we also have an invest uh, which is stalled near the Pakistan-India border and heavy rain expected for those coastal regions with potential development as well. Uh, here's a look at the Atlantic and this is now a 40% development area. A depression could form by early next week. I think it's going to become likely uh, if these model trends continue uh, by the time it gets to the islands on Monday or Tuesday. Um, not just a depression, but quite possibly a tropical storm. As we take a look here at the tropics right now, we do see a lot of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. A lot of rain coming to Houston, and this system isn't even going to get named. Just a big mess coming, especially the coastal bend uh, south of Houston, Galveston Island, uh, Bolivar Peninsula to Port Arthur and southwest Louisiana. You're going to get a lot of moisture, but you're not going to get a named storm. Florida is going to see some unsettled weather. There's a little bit of a weakness spinning off the coast. Uh, it is void of convection in the middle. All the action is over the Florida Straits and over the Bahamas here. And you can see just a large amount of wind shear uh, taking place across the Gulf, keeping things at bay. Uh, the Caribbean has much lighter wind shear, but we don't have a system to really track. We've got a weak wave that's going to continue towards Central America, unlikely to develop until maybe it gets to the Pacific. And then we've got a weakness here, um, which did actually have a little yellow area yesterday east of Bermuda. Now uh, that chance has dwindled, and it is not going to be a threat to any land anyway, even if it does try to become a brief tropical system. Now, uh, farther into the main development region, uh, the reason things have not been developing, even though they look hostile, um, is that we just have a strong amount of wind shear from east to west uh, going across the lower latitudes. Uh, waves that go north of this avoid the wind shear but get hit with this dry and stable air and cooler water in place north of the Cabo Verdes. Those are these islands right in here. Uh, however, uh, we are starting to see some relaxation in that wind shear. That's why we've got an area coming off the coast here that looks a lot more menacing. It's pretty far to the south, but something that could survive. But the system we're actually more concerned with does not look as impressive yet. That is this feature over here, halfway from Africa to the islands, which are over in here. Uh, but that is actually going to move out of this unfavorable area in here and into a more favorable area for development when it gets towards the islands here late this holiday weekend into the beginning of next week. The one that follows it, if it develops sooner, could try to snag that name first. The, the name after Francine is Gordon, uh, but it also looks like it's more likely to be a recurving system that doesn't threaten land because it's bigger and more likely to gain latitude. So weaker systems tend to go more southerly along with our trade winds at the lower parts of the atmosphere. Stronger or bigger systems tend to feel more of that uh, latitude pull and as a result, I think this system is not going to be a threat to land. It will be uh, a storm that 
maybe for the first time doesn't affect land of all the storms we've had so far in the Atlantic season. So yes, we're in a lull, but the potential here continues to be significant for storms to form and strengthen quickly once they get out of the unfavorable environment. <clears throat> and you can see here the wind shear, or I'm sorry, not wind shear, water temperatures have been extremely warm in the North Atlantic. That's actually contributing to this more stable air in here. Um, if this gets hotter, then there's going to be more of a difference here in pressure that actually uh, will hurt our chances to have lots of storms coming off of Africa. So this is actually not a bad thing to see up in here, uh, although for marine interests off of Atlantic Canada, probably not what you want, but this is not a bad thing. Uh, however, um, after systems uh, move across the Atlantic into this zone in here, closer to land is when they've got the chance to develop. And that's what we saw with Ernesto a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's what we saw with Barrel over a month ago. And I think that's what we're going to see here with the next system. The other thing we're watching is the Saharan dust. You can see it is going to not totally vanish this weekend, but it will dissipate gradually. And uh, less of this dust that we see, the more likely we're going to see a moisture increase and more thunderstorm development. So our ensembles show us here from earlier today that there are chances for development here from both of these features. And the chance goes above 50% that we even have a depression by the weekend. That may be a little bit too aggressive, depending on uh, how this plays out in the next couple of days. But I do think by the time we see this coming towards the southern uh, leeward and northern windward islands by Labor Day Monday, we will probably have a depression, possibly even a tropical storm. And that continues on into the Caribbean. We see more and more guidance showing that threatening uh, Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Cuba, and maybe the southern Bahamas as well. And once we get systems out in this direction that move towards Cuba, then we need to start watching a lot more closely in the United States as well as northeastern Mexico. Uh, but nothing's going to get here before next weekend. So there's a lot of time still, about nine to 10 days before we need to start getting too concerned. Uh, the good news is that the feature behind it, as I mentioned, looks like it's going to gain latitude and avoid the Caribbean. Uh, and we may see a bit of a small lull after that until the next one comes. So it's definitely picking up, but it is not picking up as fast as I personally thought it would. Uh, but you know what? We've seen seasons like that before that have gone dormant, and then all of a sudden something comes alive like a Hurricane Ian in 2022. I still believe this is going to be a highly destructive season. Honestly, it already has been. Uh, between the flooding we've seen from no-name storms uh, to systems like Barrel that cause major issues in the Caribbean and in Mexico and certainly in the Houston area, uh, to Ernesto, which fortunately Bermuda is pretty resilient, but took a direct hit on Bermuda. Uh, so it's already been destructive. We don't need 100 storms to make that happen. We just need a few really nasty ones to hit in vulnerable spots. Uh, so anyway, getting past that, let's take a look here at what the ensemble show us. And very slow development between now and next Monday evening. The system may be moving through sometime on Monday night or Tuesday morning. And then we see, generally speaking, more of a west to west northwesterly track. And by this time next week, um, we still have a lot of uncertainty, but anything in the southern central Caribbean all the way up to the southwest or southeastern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. As you would imagine, things are going to split into two here, depending on where the system goes. If it does try to gain latitude sooner, then it's more likely going to head up in this direction, maybe even threaten Bermuda or possibly the northeast coast of the United States, but not before next weekend. It'd be after that. Uh, but there are several solutions that take this near Hispaniola, Cuba and Jamaica and then threaten Florida. And if that happens, it may be something to worry about here by uh, at least the second part of next weekend, the 7th or 8th. And there are several uh, solutions that continue it more westerly, which would be the best for the United States, but not good for Mexico or Central America. That would be an issue the following week. And again, it hasn't formed yet. So we are going off of an idea and running with it and seeing about 50 different possible solutions here. Uh, here's another look at those ensembles, just so you guys can follow along here. These are the 6 Z ones. And you can see here two clusters of models showing activity. This is going to be late Monday night, early Tuesday morning over the islands. Several solutions showing potential development, but different intensity levels. And then we actually see some development coming behind it as well, although this is just one of many ensemble solutions. There's a bit of a low pressure area to keep an eye on here off the Texas coast. It's going to be wet there, uh, but right now the probability of something forming isn't super high. We'll be watching it, but it's not a very good chance. Now, as we move on into the middle of next week, we do see several solutions that bring potentially a tropical storm and maybe even a hurricane close to Puerto Rico, 
maybe into the South Central Caribbean as well. You can see there's still some solutions down in here, and these could end up being correct. I don't always go with the strongest, biggest, baddest solution. It doesn't always happen that way, but there is the option for something like that to happen. And you can see that a little bit more closely here. Uh, different solutions of various intensities uh, across the Southeast Caribbean here next Tuesday night. And then some more menacing ones, maybe to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, which of course still are uh, cleaning up from the damage from Ernesto a few weeks ago. Here's a Canadian ensemble. Again, same website, different model, same type of solutions. You can see the Canadian is not as aggressive here, not as many ensembles showing development. Uh, and generally speaking, as we head into this general direction, much less uh, development being shown here, but the operational is showing something forming. And that would mean Cuba, Florida, and the Eastern Gulf should be watching here towards the end of next week. Uh, here's the next feature behind it, more than likely a fish storm curving up into this weakness. You kind of see up aloft, there's high pressure here and high pressure here. The system will try to split the uprights here and find that weakness in between the two. Uh, so that's a look at the Canadian. Uh, it does leave some, some solutions, leave it into the Gulf here. Again, I'm not forecasting that yet, but weaker steering currents could lead to more uncertainty here once we get to about the 10th to 12th of September. And finally, the GFS ensembles run earlier today, all showing, for the most part, a feature forming in the Eastern Caribbean and tracking close to Puerto Rico. Uh, some differences in the timing. This is next Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Some solutions, a hurricane moving away from Puerto Rico like we saw with Ernesto, others a little bit farther south. This over here is not from this feature. It's got a little weakness coming in ahead of it that it tries to develop. I'm not going to say it's not happening, but right now that's not very likely. Uh, so generally, I would be focusing on these solutions here for what could be Francine and some solutions starting to show uh, what could be Gordon after that. By the way, there's something else uh, behind it, as you might imagine, this time of the year. As we move this on a little bit farther into time, aside from this anomaly over here, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but it's not as likely. We've got some possible scenarios where by next weekend, maybe something up in this direction, maybe affecting the Southeast or the Bahamas or even Bermuda. And then a few more solutions down in here that we need to watch for Florida, Cuba, and the Eastern Gulf of Mexico. So again, you can call it hype. You can call it whatever you want. I just want people to know what we're watching and how it's trending. Once we have a better idea, and I think that'll be next Monday or Tuesday, then we can start issuing some forecasts. But until then, we're going to see just a major... Uh, amount of disagreement here, lots of possibilities, but nothing yet coming to fruition. Uh, I will show you operational models. And one reason that I am doing this video today is that we are starting to see some agreement finally uh, with low pressure forming here. This is Monday afternoon and Monday night with a system that's pretty weak moving into the Caribbean uh, right around uh, Martinique and Dominica here. You can see it does gradually strengthen south of Hispaniola next Wednesday. And uh, as we move that on into time, uh, it does pull the system up closer to uh, Cuba and maybe eventually a threat to Florida, if that is correct. Uh, that's the European. It doesn't go beyond 10 days, so it would not be hitting Florida in the next 10 days, but days 11 and 12 are something we need to keep an eye on if this track holds, which it may not. Uh, you can see the system behind it slower to develop, but starting to gain some latitude and probably not a threat to the Caribbean. Uh, the Canadian model is in kind of in the same boat. This is the earlier run from today. I haven't loaded the newest one yet, but you can see similar type solutions south of Puerto Rico, tropical storm, then maybe a hurricane near Haiti and uh, the, the western part of Hispaniola here by next Thursday morning, and then weakening as it interacts with the mountains of Haiti and Cuba. Now, the Canadian's often too weak, but this is a more of a threat for South Florida and the Bahamas, and this would be the following weekend as well, weekend after next. Uh, the GFS... Uh, needs a warning label on it. Caution, you do not use without expertise, but I will say it also is showing development here. A little bit weaker, doesn't really get it going until it moves past the islands and moves south of Puerto Rico here next Tuesday night. Here's a look at next Wednesday, strengthening system, maybe taking aim at Jamaica as a hurricane, and unfortunately, maybe a stronger hurricane depending on what happens down here. And this particular run is more of a threat to Cuba and eventually the west coast of Florida. Uh, because it is a little bit farther south, it's making a rounder turn, and as a result, uh, keeps Florida out of its crosshairs until we get to the following week. It wouldn't be next weekend, but Monday and Tuesday beyond. Again, this is just one model run. Um, I can start to load the following run. I don't know if it's all the way through. No, it's not. So I don't know yet what it's showing, but you can see until the system develops here next Monday or Tuesday, 
really we can't make that kind of a call. Uh, finally, the Icon German model from earlier. Um, I'll show you that and then I'll show you the newest one as it trickles in. It also shows a weak system here moving through the islands on Tuesday morning, developing as a tropical storm southwest of Puerto Rico. So definitely favorable for something to form in the Eastern Caribbean uh, once it gets south of Puerto Rico. This would be potentially heading towards hurricane intensity and this is next Thursday morning. So obviously Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba, Mexico all need to be keeping a close eye as most of our major models show development and maybe a hurricane if it makes it into this region. Here's the next one behind it starting to gain latitude. Uh, here's a look at the following model run that is just trickling in now this afternoon's icon model. And you can see it is gaining a little bit more latitude but also more intensity looking like it may take a hit on the Dominican Republic. And this would be better for the Western and Central Gulf, but maybe still something to watch for Florida and certainly the Bahamas and the East Coast as well. So that's it for the Atlantic. Uh, until I know what's going to happen here when this forms Monday or Tuesday, we're just still speculating. I just want you guys to be aware of what's out there at this point. There's no need to start canceling trips or anything, but we do need to be aware of what is potentially going to be developing here by next week. Uh, here's a look at the Eastern Pacific, a little bit busy, but nothing of any organization, just a big monsoon trough, nothing to worry about in Mexico. Here's the remains of Tropical Storm Hector, now just a remnant low at this point. In the Central Pacific, you can see what's left of Gilma, tropical depression here, uh, moisture heading towards Hawaii, and you can see Tropical Storm Hona beginning to re-intensify despite some of this southwest shear. The waters in here are a little bit warmer than they were near Hawaii. So this could try to become a hurricane again when it gets up into here. I'll just go over this real quick because I know some of you may be watching from Hawaii this morning. Uh, but this is um, Hona and you can see some wind shear, but strengthening some. Uh, Going to turn north and then back to the west. No threat to land at this point. This is Gilma, a depression likely to become a remnant low by tonight. The remains are going to be moving close to Hawaii by Friday morning, but probably not going to be nearly that big a deal at this point. And then we do have to worry about uh, Tropical Storm Shanshan. Shan. It was a strong typhoon, now a tropical storm over southwestern Japan. There's also something to keep an eye on well south that may try to sneak up in this direction afterwards. Uh, we've got some time on that, but Shanshan Shan is in no rush at this point. You can see moving very slowly across southwest Japan, bringing incredible rain with it. Uh, you can see here that the radar shows Lots of moisture feeding up into central Japan, including most of Honshu. And then our center here is near uh, Fukuoka and not moving very much to the north and east. And models are struggling. The forecast is a lot slower. It, it just kind of kills it near uh, Osaka and Kyoto here as we get to locally on Saturday morning. And uh, some of our guidance uh, tries to keep it alive and maybe even a few solutions try to drift it back towards Okinawa. But I don't know if that's actually going to happen. The halves model says it could. It could try to keep some intensity loop a few times, and then eventually it finally heads out. And that would be the best case scenario here. And finally, we do have a, a weakness that has a circulation, not quite a depression, but it's right near the India-Pakistan border. A lot of rain expected with that. You can see on the halves uh, satellite here, it's going to stay moist as this spins slowly west towards Pakistan. Eventually, it'll die. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all's time today. As always, I want to thank you. I want to ask you if you have not become a member of the community to do so. I am a meteorologist. Um, I will share what I think is a threat, but the fun part about the weather is it's always changing. It keeps me in business here. Uh, but uh, what you see today may be totally different in a few days. So as always, I'm going to update you guys when I feel it's necessary. I thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great holiday weekend coming up. And I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all he's done. Uh, I give God the glory every day. I thank him. Every day is a blessing, and God loves us all. John 3, 16, New International Version says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you are not a Christian believer, God still loves you. He loves the entire world. If you are a Christian believer, you have that eternal promise that you will not perish but live eternally. Uh, but please don't, please don't um, think that God doesn't love you just because you don't choose to believe what I believe. I truly believe he loves you and has great things coming for you. But when your time on earth is gone, uh, if you have not made that decision, then the promise is that you will not be saved. And I pray that you will be saved. I want to see you be saved. I want to encourage you to go through the difficulties in life knowing that there's something greater waiting at the end. So if you have any prayer requests, please uh, submit those. I will be in prayer for you. Uh, through this holiday weekend. And as always, I thank you for your time today. I will see you all again soon. God bless you.